Electrolysis is an amazing treatment, but there's one thing that puts people off and that's post-inflammatory hyper or hypopigmentation. Your skin is gonna go through temporary skin reactions, which is part of the healing process. And some people see these reactions and think that they've been, um, they're gonna be like that forever. I'm gonna hopefully put you at ease. I'm gonna show you pictures of my experience when I have uh, electrolysis done. I'm also gonna show you pictures of my clients and show that you know, how the post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation heals and how it can be quick for some people, slow a slower process for others. And hopefully, yeah, you will feel a lot more calmer when you see these pictures and also hear the explanation of why it happens. So yeah, let's get into it. Quickly, before we go ahead, I'm gonna quickly mention Ana Luisa, which is one of my favorite jewelry brands and that's why I continue to collab with them. So for those of you who don't know, Ana Luisa is an amazing high quality jewelry brand and they are based in New York. And yeah, today I picked up a few new pieces. One of them are these earrings. So these earrings are the Ash Double Silver and I've realized that they have earrings that look like the plain top piece on its own and they also have one that looks like the bottom piece on its own if you like one or the other. I wonder if I can take that bottom bit off. Oh my god I can! Oh that's nice so it's like a two in one! Day and then add this piece and night. Day to night earrings. Oh my god I love that. And then the second two pieces that I chose are these silver rings. So this one is the Slim Rope and I had my eye on this one for quite a long time now. And then the second one, oh I forgot what this one was called, I think it was Zeta? Zeta? Z-E-T-A. I will leave a link at the, in the description box below. I feel like they match really well together. But yeah, once you know your ring size, it's really easy to order rings on there. And I also want to show you, like, where I've spoken about Anna Luisa before and the quality, I think I'm going to keep repeating myself with my story about this letter necklace. As you can see, it is incredibly dainty. It's the letter necklace, and of course I've got M for Melis for myself. There have been a number of times where I've accidentally caught my finger on it. I don't want to jinx it, but it hasn't broken. So even though it's dainty jewellery, it's incredibly durable and good quality um, I'm still like trying to be as careful as I can with these pieces of jewelry but yeah this is my oldest piece of jewelry the letter the, and the rope as well this rope jewelry um, I've got this both of these in the silver and the gold they're my most worn and you can't see any wear or tear on it so yeah I quickly wanted to mention my favorite jewelry pieces and I will leave all the details down below you can check it out in the description box so coming back to the topic of hyperpigmentation after you've had an electrolysis session, the reason this happens, first of all, is because your skin is red and inflamed after the session, which is completely normal. It is a histamine reaction of your skin, and it's part of how your skin likes to heal. And then once that inflammation goes down, there is uh, there are capillary walls that are reforming as part of the healing process, and that's why you get these... Uh, almost dark reddish like dark tones where you can see the hyperpigmentation forming and again this is just part of the healing process and eventually it is going to fade. I'm going to move over to the side and show you this picture of me. The top picture is towards the end of my journey. I started I think it was 2017 to 2020 so the bottom picture is 2020, so that's when I pretty much got my results. Now as you can see, the top picture there are dark marks of, there's like different spots of pigmentation. So that's called hyper post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. And in the bottom picture you can see that those marks have faded. There is one little dot, one speck. Um, and obviously this is a really old picture, it's back in 2020 when I just finished my, I pretty much got the bulk of hair removed, I finished my electrolysis results. Um, and that mark is completely gone as well. So I don't have any scarring. I don't have any marks of hyperpigmentation. Now, because of my PCOS, if I ever have a top-up session, which I do a few times a year, I do have like slight darkness and then that does fade. Now, I'm gonna show you another picture of one of my clients. 
um, because certain ethnic backgrounds are more prone to hyperpigmentation. So with this client, the top picture is before her first session of electrolysis. You can see where we did the patch test on this side of her jawline. So that's where we did the patch test and then this picture was taken before her first ever electrolysis session. So she saw results very, very quickly. Yeah, amazing hair reduction, but let's not look at the hair for today. We're just gonna focus on the skin and in terms of like, any darkness on the skin so you can see that there are little dark marks of hyperpigmentation which is caused by the inflammation from electrolysis and is completely normal and part of the healing process she doesn't have PCOS she doesn't have a hormonal imbalance it was a paradoxical hypertrichosis as you can see from the dates we started in August 2022 and then the after picture is November 2023, so just over a year. And you can see that the skin has really improved because as your sessions become more spread apart, your skin is going to have longer time to heal from previous electrolysis sessions. Now, with some people, it can take up to 18 months to completely heal from any post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation you can incorporate certain ingredients like niacinamide, azelaic acid within your skincare routine as long as you're not using it too close to your electrolysis session, it's okay to use. And yeah, her skin looks beautiful, um, very, very clear and the post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation is gone. I'm gonna talk about one more client in particular because I'm gonna, and this is a very, very old picture. This is one of my first uh, electrolysis clients and a friend of mine. So this client, you can see that there was already hyperpigmentation caused by other temporary hair removal methods. In this particular case, it was threading. It has caused some hyperpigmentation in the area already. After having electrolysis for a year, this client does have PCOS, but you can see that the results look great. But yeah, in this case, the hyperpigmentation was there to begin with and it has reduced quite a lot. So hopefully by showing you three different situations, you might feel a little bit more at ease. I do have more pictures, but I just need to put them together. I also wanted to include a picture of my clients who have a darker skin tone, but I don't have the after picture yet. I wanna wait until I get the after picture and then you can see that the post-inflammatory pigmentation, how much it develops for darker skin tones and then how much it fades with darker skin tones. So hopefully in the future, um, once that pigmentation has faded because it can take some time um, I will create that and I'll make a video on electrolysis for darker skin tones and I'll show you what to expect there are risks with every treatment that you have the electrologist themselves can be as careful as they can be on their end as much as I want to say don't worry this will fade that will fade that's temporary this is temporary I also gotta be very, very realistic and be very, very serious as well. If you don't follow your aftercare, if you're not extremely careful, you are gonna experience things that could possibly be permanent for you. The way to know if something is temporary or permanent, honestly, you're not gonna know until it's been a good few years and then if you still have it, okay, it's been permanent, it's there permanently. If it's faded, okay, that was like a temporary skin reaction. I know that there are so many people, so many of my clients like me, where they don't follow the aftercare properly and sometimes they do it right in front of me. They know they're not me meant to put makeup on after electrolysis. I finish their session and they're like, Melissa, I know you told me that I'm not med meant to wear makeup, but I have to put makeup on and they do it in front of me. They know it's wrong, they still do it. So, And then I have some clients who are so strict. They are, they are like the A-star client where they follow it step by step and they're very strict and I notice that those clients skin heals the best. Yeah hopefully lesson learned um, from this video and yeah I hope that it was helpful. I want to quickly end the video by reminding you about Anna Luisa to check their website out. I will leave the link in the description box below. So yeah that's it from me today. See you next time.